Yeah, we uh, ran into a little issue when we were cutting these parts. Cutting the flats on these parts. This part gets cut in half and it ends up looking something like this. These are wrench flats. So what the issue was, is that when you put the part in the collet and use the wrench to lock it up, everything was fine. But then when you went to release the collet, the hole for the wrench wasn't accessible. It was somewhere where you couldn't get to it. So basically had to turn the unit off, rotate it, take the part out, put another one in. Turn the unit back on after the part was in the collet. And uh, so to solve that problem, we're going to drill some more holes. So we took it apart and we're going to add five more holes. So we'll have a total of six holes where these blue lines are is where I'm going to drill the holes. And, you know, that's how you, you find out how this stuff works. You know, you try it out, see what works, what doesn't work. Of course, the box unit's down here. All the wires are inside. So the box unit is one unit, then the plate is the other unit. We have all the wires in there. Have the remote switch in there, the cable for the plug-in, cables for the airline. Everything's in the box now. This worked out really well. Take that on and off anytime I want. It's ready to go. Just gotta drill these holes and put this thing back together. And be ready to fire it up again. Good thing it was nice and easy to take apart, just do it right here on the bench. Nothing complicated, fairly simple. Alright, just wanted to let you know, so if you do this, make sure you drill extra holes in your shaft. So you have access to it, unless you go a different route. Alright, bye. Okay, so what we did here was we, we took it apart and we added some more holes to the shaft. got a total of six holes so that when this thing is rotated 
should be able to pick up two or more of these holes to uh, loosen it or tighten it. And what we also did was we elongated these slots, these holes. These bolts that hold this onto this aluminum piece elongated those. And the reason for that is because we have some fixtures that already have timing marks in them. When we put them on the front, we need to be able to time those fixtures. So by loosening these screws, I can rotate this with the belt still attached and line that fixture up and then tighten the screws and it should be right. Now if I didn't have those elongated, I would have to have the unit off, rotate it, and then when I turn the unit back on, hopefully it doesn't move. And the only other way is to line it up and tighten the collet while it's lined up. But any of those, those ways are just, is just too uh, cumbersome. So this is a better way. Now, I couldn't do this if I didn't have the brake unit on because the brake is what actually locks the spindle and all the tooth belt does is rotate it in a free state. And there's one other thing we did while we had it apart. Put a little weep hole in the bottom of the part. That way, if any oil collects in the spindle, it'll come out the hole instead of building up. Not necessarily oil, but water from maybe a spray mister gets in here. This is a pretty tight fit. But if some reason it happens to get in here, it'll come out the weep hole. Not that there's going to be a lot, but you don't want water getting inside the unit. And... Uh, uh, well, a water mixture with cool, you know, cool mist kind of mixture. And you don't want the water getting in the unit. So we, well, we had a part, we added that we pull to it. So anyway, it's uh, ready to go back on, and uh, talk to you later.